Hey, After Buzzers. Kevin Undergar, the executive producer of After Buzz, along with Maria Menunos. Hi, everybody. And Maria and I, as you know, have put so much time and money into mm-hmm. the After Buzz TV product and really haven't seen a lot in return. Nope, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the ways you guys can actually help us is by tuning into our new reality show, Chasing Maria Menunos. It premieres Tuesday, March 18th, 10 o'clock, 9 p.m. Central, and features me and Maria basically bickering, fighting. No. No. No, it's not just bickering and fighting. You get an inside look into my life, behind the scenes. You'll also get a behind the scenes look at After Buzz and an inside look at how Maria does everything in her power to shut us down Honey, because she's very cheap. That is so rude. Why would you say that? Because it's true. Oh, my okay. God. Well, I'm- anyway, guys. Please tune in to Chasing Maria Menounos on Oxygen, Tuesday, March 18th at 10 p.m. We really do appreciate it. All of your support will help After Buzz because Maria certainly won't. <laughs> so rude. You're listening to the After Buzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, The After Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's Teen Wolf After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Teen Wolf After Show. Hello, After Buzzers. We're here doing another After Buzz TV after show for MTV's Teen Wolf Season 3, Episode 22, Devoid. I'm your host this evening, Kristen Elizabeth Snyder, and joining me, After Buzz TV host June Lee. Hey, everyone. Our special guest this evening directed this week's episode. Please welcome Christian Taylor. Hello. <laughs> so great to have you in studio oh, again. Cool. I swear, every time you direct an episode, it's my favorite episode. <laughs> For those of you at home who don't know, he also directed Hotel California. Motel. And, oh, Motel. Mo- I know. And Hotel. And Mo- Hotel, yeah. At the, at the Glen Capri. Yes, yes. That was such an amazing episode, and so was this one. I really oh. think this week was my favorite episode of this season. Oh, yes, that's so great. I- I have to agree. Oh, thank I'm such you. a huge fan of this That's episode. Pretty. I even like tweeded about it, and I I don't usually tweet while I watch the episode. But I was like, oh, <laughs> she was so, so excited. excited. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> so, what were you know some of the trials going into filming such an amazing episode? I mean, this one was particularly difficult because it had so many sort of big set pieces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and um, <clears throat> locations. So it was it was particularly challenging in that way and to fit it all in and they actually gave me an extra sort of day to do it because our spread was t- so complicated to fit in all the actors and everything. Um but it was um you know the white room was incredible to film oh in. Oh my god. I mean Russell sort of set the template with that because he did it in in the season before and and mm-hmm. that was uh and it's actually right there we found it in on the lot where we're shooting. It's because yeah, because we shoot in um, this old speaker factory, so that's all being converted. And we were walking around trying to find different locations, and then there was this incredible sort of white epic room with not no furniture. And we're like, we've got to film in here. And <laughs> Jeff's like, we've got to film in here. And <laughs> what so, did you guys change? Did you change anything about the, the room when you the found it? The only thing you see in the room that's different or you don't see is there are actually a lot of doors and sort of little. Uh, sprinklers that we had to digitally uh, remove and it just mm-hmm. so that it, we would mm-hmm. get that right white sort of expanse of space and they put was, that room there for you guys yeah. they knew you were coming yeah. <laughs> and it's I'm sure I'm sure we'll be back there again because it's such a great space of the mind it, it, exactly it represents the mind so yeah. well mm-hmm. I was so glad we got to go back into you know Styles's mind and and get that scene again because it was so epic the first time during the ice bath scene yep. Yep. and then to bring it back it was just so refreshing for the audience to, yeah. for us to go back in that place as well we felt like we were there I did anyway Mm-hmm. Well, it was fun in the writers' room. We were like, you know, it was late in the season, and we're like, "What can we do that's fun?" And you know, I loved Inception, and I wanted to sort of. It would be great to sort of do a sort of Inception type episode, and and then I I actually sort of came up with the idea of doing a sort of dual, um, 
mind melt, as it were, our version of the mind melt. And so having Lydia there, because I love the character of Lydia, and she's, she plays such a huge part in Motel California, that it sort of became another way to do it. And then we thought, well, we can do anything. And the thing that we did have with this episode, because it was late in the season, it was like, we can't go out, out on locations. So we try, you know, we reused the uh, Iken House sets and we oh. reused the white room and we just mm-hmm. thought, how can we make this? And then Jeff had an idea of going back into the, into Allison's um, and Scott's little closet mm-hmm. and everything. So it was just, it was just to sort of ha- play with the mind and, and have fun with it. And what would the Nagitsune do if it saw people in its in its space and it was just it was a really really fun thing to do and I got to play with lots of camera tricks and stuff. It's incredible the way it came across on screen. It's really? one thing to write that in mm-hmm. a script, as difficult mm-hmm. as I'm sure that is, and then to also have that actually transfer on the screen, it's just brilliant. Well it's funny because as I was directing it, I was like, oh god, this isn't working. It's not gonna work. Oh god, it's not really? gonna work. Really? And then you oh just gosh, you don't surprising. really know and then you mm-hmm. get the footage. I mean I I know when I'm getting a good performance on set because I a, we have fantastic actors, so mm-hmm. a lot of the times you're not you're just m- m- sort of steering in them in, in the right direction. Um, <clears throat> but this was like a lot of different things that we were doing and different sort of visual set pieces, and you know I had the idea of the balloons and everything. Oh, which that I, was my absolute yeah. favorite scene, oh, which I want to talk cool. about mm-hmm. more later. But that I just like melted it. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> good. I'm I didn't glad. know what was happening for a little bit. Oh, good. I, did, I wasn't sure if it was going to like crush her, and then I realized, <laughs> and then that reveal was so amazing. <laughs> I I can't say enough, but let's go (laughs) ahead and get into the episode. So um, we open with the fight scene, and it was kind of like Styles and his dad trying to take him in. He's like, if you're my son, you'll come willingly. And, of course, we know that it's the Nugitsune, unfortunately, and he kind of puts everybody against each other. We get that ridiculous fight, that scene with the guns where we don't know who's going to kill who, and then Allison, of course, figures out that it's a trick, thank God. And then Styles, who's the new Gitsune, kind of like places friends against the Oni. It's yeah. just, he, he's such a brilliant villain. I, I mean, oh, I mean, I don't know if, if I just remember when we were like, when I came on the show and I was like, this, this guy is such a fantastic actor and it'll be really fun to have him be dark. So um, that sort of was the sort of push behind the season was to make him really be able to have more not that his range is just to have more range acting wise, I think. Mm-hmm. And and he's you know, he just delivers and delivers and mm-hmm. he's one of those actors to work with who you're just like uh, could you try this and he'll do it, you know, and it's right. like and, and he he it was it's he's he's great to direct. Like I love the scene with Melissa. That was a really fun scene to direct because oh, I yeah. I just was like He just turned so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh interesting. It's just the face, he's just the subtlety of sorry. No, yeah. The no. subtlety of just sort of how he can Transform in that thing, and you just leave the camera there. I have mm-hmm. to ask, were those real tears? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. He, 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 he just really. Yeah, it's just the real deal. He'll just he'll bring it in such a sort of nuanced way that it's sometimes I think he doesn't even realize what he's doing because he's just it's just so brilliant and. You know, I think it's so unexpected to see the clown of a show, the one who makes us laugh every week, mm-hmm. turn into the dark villain. Mm-hmm. And for you guys in the writing room, I know you've written a few of the episodes too, mm-hmm. and you're in that writing room. Mm-hmm. I mean, the stuff you guys come up with, <laughs> it's just like admirable like to, mm-hmm. to see on screen and to think, how did we get here? Right. And, and whose idea was this? It's just, it's coming across so well. And oh, I know God. all the fans are really thankful mm-hmm. to be seeing this kind of TV. And I mean, we're so appreciative that you oh, could come in tonight and join us and yes, break down the episode. No, no, I actually just finished directing. Well, I didn't finish directing because I finished directing the, my third episode last night. Oh wow! And then I have to do some second unit stuff tomorrow. So I was like, I was like, oh my god, I'm so tired. Oh. Can I do? The, I'm gonna look so tired. No, you don't look <laughs> tired so, at all. So like, just brighten the lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, they will. I asked for that too. But no, you look amazing. Thank and you. I mean, you know, we're all appreciative of how many hours you're putting in. I, mm-hmm. I believe last week we were talking about with Gabe. It just takes what seven weeks till like ev- for each episode to come together. It's insane. I mean, it's amazing. We have such an amazing 
crew because mm. I mean I'm on the set yesterday, right? So we're shooting at this. This isn't any spoiler, I don't think, but we're si- shooting on a uh, at a gas station, that's, mm-hmm. and we and I pitched that I wanted it to rain. So we have these giant rain towers, and you know it was like shooting a major feature film, and all the crew have to get into rain gear, and you know they're doing you know, and it's and it's not easy, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you turn the rain on, ah, the rain's rolling, and everyone's like rolling, and get the actor out there, and the rain's, you know, and it. <laughs> It's they're doing that every single night, and I was a lot on the set producing stuff, so I'd stay there all night too. But the crew is really amazing, and then the editing, mm-hmm. editorial sort of department is incredible because they're um, constantly working weekends and, and long hours to put the episodes together, and it's it's a, it's a huge huge undertaking. So, yeah, it uh, is. But yeah. what an incredible vision and dream to be a part of. Yeah, yeah. No, Jeff Davis. He's yeah. going to join us later this season and. He's um, he's well. amazing, and he's you know given me opportunities with directing, and mm-hmm. um, he's he's a, he's a great leader in the show. You know, is really his vision, so it's it's not, it's a fun thing to go on with him. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so getting back a little bit to this episode, so Styles then finds after the whole fight scene, he sort of escapes and he finds Kira's mom. He does that whole thing where he finds out that there was a five because Reese died as as himself, which I think was really important because last week I was like, I was so blown away about how attractive Reese was <laughs> that I was like, maybe he's not dead. Like maybe he can come back. And she was like, no, he's dead. And all the fans were like, he's so dead. Like what are you saying? But I was just very wishful because you know, Teen Wolf it doesn't mean you're dead when you die. But I was really hoping he would come back because that man was just. He was just so beautiful. <laughs> Did you have anything to do with the casting for that? Well, he's actually, it's funny because we, he's a twin, okay? Oh wow. my goodness. And we auditioned him. He and his brother were contenders for um, oh. for the twins oh. on, our, on our show. So, oh, I see. Um, and then, we, you know, we ended up going with Max and Charlie, but um, they, they're they called the Sky, Skyler Twins. No, the, the Maxim Twins. Yeah, no, God, I'm like, now I'm forgetting. Anyway, they're, they're really <laughs> lovely guys, and Skylar's like a lovely, lovely guy, and Jeff was like, let's give him a part. And we, it wasn't about, um, it wasn't about, you know, he auditioned and he did really well, so Jeff, um, so Jeff cast him. So it's really good, and, and uh, Jeff's very like that. He's very loyal and, mm-hmm. and will give people opportunities who other people wouldn't necessarily right. give. And you know, I personally am so grateful for that. But he also does it with his his friends. If they can deliver, right. you know, he will give them the part, or, or or people that he's met or know or everything. So it's it's really good in that way. Well, his gambling on you definitely paid off. Oh. <laughs> Your episodes are some of the best that. episodes. And I don't. I, I think. Yeah, I think there's just such a presence in everybody who's involved in this production mm-hmm. and like just a presence so they're flexible with the actors and just like right. the whole process of it and giving people chances and you that guys are deliver. a family mm-hmm. too yeah, I think that's is. the most like yeah. every time we have one of you come on you often like will talk about you know all the other members mm-hmm, you know except mm-hmm. for yourself which shows you know right. what you know what a great family you guys are because mm-hmm. no one really wants to talk about themselves they're just here like giving credit to everybody else who works on the well, show mm-hmm. I mean and one of the people I should really give credit to other than Jeff is, is Russell who who is you know he directed the pilot and mm-hmm. he's been a real mentor for me because mm-hmm. you know I directed before and you know I graduated college and made a short film that got nominated for an Oscar and it took me mm-hmm. 20 Incredible. years I think I said this before I don't know it took me 20 years to be able to direct something else and get paid for it mm-hmm. um, and Russell what was great is I've had a lot of experience of watching people direct on set and producing episodes of TV but Russell was great to watch because he he very brilliantly uh, stages and composes things in a very filmic way. And, and that's also a credit to Jeff, is that he really pushes that the show is filmic. And not to sort of uh, criticize other shows, but I think our show is particularly filmic, and it's a great show. <laughs> it to, is. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's a great show to direct, because you get to do things which you wouldn't be able to do on, on I, I mean, I'm, I, not, I'm not saying this is, the show, but something right. like Pretty Little Liars, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to do the sort of camera moves and the cutting mm-hmm. and the shots and the, and the dream sequences right. and all right. this sort of stuff that we get to do. So that's that's really fun, right. really really fun, and really energetic and sort of muscular filmmaking because we we're constantly having to do it very quickly, very fast with mm-hmm. not a lot of money. 
So we sort of yeah. That's the amazing thing about it. And speaking of short films, yeah. like a lot of short films are made with such small budgets. Totally. They're very economical, and everything is there for a reason. Completely. And you get that with Teen Wolf. Everything mm-hmm. is there for a reason. Every yep. shot, every move is really thought out. Yeah. You know, so it shows. It the really commitment shows. and passion definitely mm-hmm. comes across on yeah. screen from all you guys. Great. But um, so getting back to the episode, we keep getting. We're I'm so sorry. excited. <gasps> no, we I'm are so it. excited. I'm no, you're that... not. <laughs> you're not. No, they want to hear you talk. They don't really want to hear me. Yeah. Talk. <laughs> or me talk. We're just here for you, actually. <laughs> um, so anytime you have a story from sad to add, they just they love cool. that. I just you know want to. I think talking about a few of these things will help you remember what it was like directing. No, it's, it does. It does. Actually. <laughs> so we get um, Style stabbing himself yep. with the fox tail. Yeah. And I don't think anyone saw that coming. And here's mom's kind of like you know I made a mistake. I didn't want this. And my prediction, I'm hoping she's gonna come. It's gonna come full circle and sort of her help Kira fix this problem mm-hmm. that she kind of started. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Um, but he stabs himself, and then we get these, you know, the the spirit un- goes into these flies that then infect, like, yep. Derek and the twins and yep. Isaac, which, obviously, one of them are probably going to be gone by the end of this season. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like, you know, Jeff said, you know, we're going to get a big death, and mm-hmm. it's going to be someone from the credits. So, yeah. I mean... I, I think the twins are going. I think maybe Isaac's going. I'm not mm-hmm. sure, but it's like I, I we June and I talked about this last week, and we kind of thought the new Gitsune would spread uh-huh. into you know other people in the show, and mm-hmm. it was nice to see that we really got how powerful the new Gitsune spirit is right. in this episode. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was happy to see Styles finally you know go off crazy and also get that from other characters, seeing what it would be like if they were the ones infected by right. the new Gitsune. Right. So that. Was really interesting to watch this, the evil spirit in all of them. How what was it like directing some of the other cast members to also break that good boundary and, mm-hmm. and kind of cross oh, the right. line mm-hmm. to be evil? They they were great because I think it gave them you know it's more Freedom. it's actually funner funner that's not a more word. fun <laughs> more fun God it's okay it's uh, more fun to play bad yeah um, isn't and, it? And, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna be a bad host. Gr- <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's bad and then there's bad. <laughs> there's bad. Bad there's, cock, good cock. I'm like, gonna be an evil host. I'm gonna start tricking my guests. And you're gonna do the nuggets and the dance. Oh, okay. Okay, check this out, Christian. Let me direct me if I'm wrong, but like, uh, is this, like she does a nuggets and dance really well. That's so we funny. came up with this last week that's after like Reese was like walking. <laughs> Am I doing it right? Or can you like kind of, give kind me of. any like? Direction. Yeah. It's a little too sexy. Well, you need the teeth. You need the teeth too. <laughs> yeah, teeth. that's very yeah. true. Yeah. Okay. And the bandage face. Uh, um. Makeup department. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I noticed about the flies mm-hmm. going in, the effect, like the attention to detail when were, the fly was going into the ear, mm-hmm. the yeah. earlobe moved a little bit, and I don't know if they like. How do they make? How do they CG that? I God, I didn't. I didn't like, even. Literally, maybe uh, our actor did it. Maybe Max did it. But, I you just, know. Yeah. No, like the earlobe. I know. The yeah. tiny bit when it, of earlobe, like when the, when well, the they fly can, goes in. When they're doing, you know, anything, they can alter things. You know, it's just a matter of money. You wow. Know? Yeah. How much insane. time they spend on it? Yeah. I like that everyone was infected a different way. Yeah. Right. So it didn't get mm-hmm. old at all. We got to see that. Yeah. We had difficulty with this episode because it it became in we you know all our episodes become unfortunately longer than they should be. <laughs> uh, and this one became came in long because we basically came in long because I think it was a long script. Because we, it was we, so fantastic. Well, yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> there was a lots lot of, was happening. Yeah, there was lots of and I, I what happened was we couldn't cut out certain sequences because we mm-hmm. do because the whole of the first or second act each person's getting infected and we couldn't cut those sequences out because uh, each scene may have not been relevant but at the end of the scene they got infected so they had to all get infected so we were stuck with a little bit of time and so we lost some other things which I loved but you know oh what no can, you do? can we get like I, is there going to be a cut oh, yeah. I keep talking uh, to Jeff cut. I keep yeah. <laughs> that's <really> hilarious <laughs> I, keep, I keep talking to Jeff Fans about like it. they should well I think there's, there's always I don't know if in the DVDs we've got 
uh, deleted scenes, but we mm-hmm. should this season because yeah. we deleted a, a lot of scenes per episode. I mean, I don't even know. You know, he releases a lot on Tumblr and on the mm-hmm. Facebook page. I don't see why not just, you know, del- add one on there. Hey, this was a deleted scene from this yeah. episode. No, or I, it's they, not a bad idea. Yeah, and they have so much of the, like, after show and then the after after show yeah. and then our after I don't after, know why after show. <laughs> it's like, it's so a, they can have after deleted exactly. scene show. Exactly. <laughs> it's a great idea. <laughs> or we can just bring them to after Oh, yeah. Bus. Completely. Exactly. We can totally oh my gosh. Sh- We're so totally here. open. <laughs> Special sneak peek. I'm going to ask Jeff when he comes to bring some deleted Say, scenes. Y- you should. Absolutely. Uh, that would be a great be idea. I'll see if that one flies. I'll be like, Christian had a suggestion. <laughs> 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 okay, so then we get to see the twins react. So they're kind of blaming each other. That's how mm-hmm. it affects them. Mm-hmm. They're blaming each other for not getting into Scott's pack. Yep. And then we see Derek turning on Argent and kind of, you know, blaming him for burning down his family. And now yep. he says he's going to do the same to him. And they're just waiting for Allison to get home, which was really crazy. But I was so excited to see that scene where Argent was telling us, you know, the first thing we do when we are trained w- when we're younger <laughs> is we put a, strap ourselves in a chair and some of us escape in hours and some of us in seconds. And it was just like so fast. Did he do that stunt himself? He, well, he we did it a couple of ways. Well, firstly... I was like, I'm just gonna leave, let the camera be on him for that and mm-hmm. not cut it because. And mm-hmm. so I do this slow push in, and and then I thought it'd be surprising. Then he he kicks himself backwards because he's such a good actor. So you can just do that with him. And then, um, well, what happened? You know, it's done in cut. So he then mm-hmm. smashes on the he smashes back onto a mat, and then we have a stunt guy actually smash with the chair, and mm-hmm. the stunt guy has a brace, and then. And then we put Arjun into the pieces with the chair, and then re, you know, he sort of falls a little bit, and the chair breaks away, and then he does he does things like kicking and you know the chair away, and so you know, so it's all put mm-hmm. built together with mm-hmm. different pieces, and you know, Hecklin had a blast in that scene because he got to be bad, so it was like, how was that directing it, him? It was good. It was really good. He really, you know, wanted to do it, so he went for it. So it was good. Yeah. Did you have trouble like trying to get anyone to be more evil? Because these guys are such nice guys. I was in, going in real to life. say, Hecklin, like, uh, he, he, he seen, I could still see it. Like, he, he was still a good guy. Uh, <laughs> like, he was he's like, struggling. Yeah, he was struggling. And the part when he's talking to himself, he's like trying to talk himself into being this like really bad guy. And like, it was just so. Adorable. Yeah. Did anybody have trouble? No. They, were they all couldn't gay. wait to be bad. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're like, I want to be next season's villain. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I really liked seeing uh, Kira and Allison work together. That oh, fun. that was so awesome. Right, and, and because I haven't seen them, you know, kind of share the screen. Right, right. And they did so well together. And, you know, it's kind of like we didn't know what that relationship was going to be like because they were both with Scott. Yep. And he ends oh, up kissing mm-hmm. them both in this episode. I know. Oh, what are the chances? <laughs> well, the interesting thing is, if you think about it, he wasn't really kissing Allison. Mm-hmm. He was kissing the Nagitsune. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but why did they even have that as what he would fall for that would trick yes. him? Well, so I go. feel like, you there know, you there's go. definitely some feelings there still. Yep. I mean, well, he wakes up love. out of it. Yeah. Never really goes yeah. away. Never doesn't. really goes doesn't. away. You know? Doesn't. doesn't. Let's <laughs> pretend it does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, you know, the Nagitsune was trying to trap them and, and keep them from getting to Styles, so that's why he would, you know, but yes, you're right, it was Allison, not Kira. Right. Uh, and then Lydia's, you know, goes back to Jackson, like, because she's back at the same yeah. night of the prom with Jackson. Yes, so. can we talk about that scene <laughs> and how amazing that must have been to direct? First, we start in that room where, you know, it's, she just sees one ball, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden, all the balloons start falling to mm-hmm. the ground, and we are transformed into, like, the dance, the prom scene with yeah. all the balloons in, in the school. That was... The most gorgeous scene ever. Oh. Yeah, it really you guys was. should have stopped right there and had a music <laughs> video. Like seriously, time out, Teen Wolf. Let's have give uh, Lydia a song. Uh, it, was, it was actually I will take Teen Wolf the musical. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Teen Wolf the music. I wonder if Jeff would have it. No, I don't think he will. Um, that could be scary. Um, it uh, it's funny because I I I had to fight Jeff on this one. He wouldn't. Oh. He didn't want to do it. And I was like. It's going to be cool. Let me do it, please. Wow. And he did. He said, okay, you do it. The, you know. And it, 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 I just, it just came to me one day. I was like, it'd be a really cool transition to have balloons. And, and we knew that we had the sets that we had to work in. So um, the night of Jackson thing was a, is, was a great sort of place to put her back. And, 
and um, the balloons were a nightmare. <laughs> Really? Uh, Please tell us. Well, because you think <laughs> balloons are going to fall one way, and then you have hundreds of balloons in bags, and the poor effects guys are, you know, trying to drop them down. They don't drop, you know, they're not heavy. Did you put right. water in? Yeah. A little bit of water? We should have. That's the or trick. Like, or like sand. Look, why? <laughs> I should have called you. God damn it. Just call after Buzz next what time you're having a you trouble. Tweet us. Tweet us. That, yeah. that would have been really cool. You're absolutely right. Because the problem was they would fall and float in different ways and I'm like, they should be falling on her. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that would have been good. And we try, we also try to have the balloons explode. That was a uh, whole part of that, was that mm -hmm. she was gonna, the balloons were gonna explode around her. Um, but the problem was that the effects guys had these little charges the pool. I'm just remembering this. <laughs> Holland ended up, like, the balloons were popping around her, but because there were so many balloons, they just, the other ones would fall in again. Oh. So you wouldn't see them pop. And they pop so quickly that you mm -hmm. ha we didn't have fast enough cameras mm -hmm. to show, you know, I wanted the balloon to go. <laughs> but, it, yeah. you know, you can't <laughs> do that unless you have a very, very hot, fast camera, which is very mm -hmm. expensive. And um, <laughs> Holland is, at one point, he's like, they're burning me, they're burning me. <laughs> Oh, and these no. little charges, which oh, were no. not burning her, but it was like Shocking they were hot. Her. Yeah, yeah, like hot little things because they had to burst the balloon. Like, so poor And so I was like, okay, forget <laughs> the balloons, you know, popping. So we cut yeah. all that out. And then I, then we came up in the editing room with him, the scratching of the, the Nagitsune scratching the mm. board, which w is a little bit of a cliche, but it was the only way to figure it out. So mm -hmm. um, we Why just, cliche? Well, it's great. You know, that sound of like, you know, yeah. it's a little bit of a cliche. And we, we, um, the way that we work, which is really great, is that we have time, so, not time, but we have, we can look at the episode and say, why don't we, resh not reshoot, but let's do a pick up here. Mm -hmm. Little close-up pickups, and so we just did close-up of the chalk on the board, and then that was that made a good transition point. So, um, right. Yeah. I mean, I didn't notice anything cliche because I was just so mesmerized good. by that scene. Mm -hmm. what, what did you feel about it, June? I was like just so in touch with it, and then the song that we played at the beginning of mm -hmm. our after show mm -hmm. was the song during that scene. Oh yeah. And I'll tweet it out later. The fans always want to know the songs. Laura Webb, she's like amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. She takes so out. Good, yeah. she's I amazing. think most of my personal playlist at home right now is the music from Teen Wolf. Yeah. Not joking. It's just she finds the best like independent rock indie bands that are out well, there. Well, the band, I've forgotten their name, which is terrible. Uh, the band who does the song with the kiss mm -hmm. is so lovely. We're going to play that at the end. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Wait, yeah. which kiss? Because Scott and Kira had a kiss. Yeah, Scott and I think Kira. the one the in Scott, the beginning, the, the song Scott was we. She wants revenge or something, and okay. then the one at the end will ask the engineer. It's uh, yeah, Scott and Kira's kiss was like, and and Laura was like, you, this is gonna work, this is gonna work, and I'm like, I don't know if it really works, and then it did. So that's <laughs> yeah, but okay, so she kisses him. We mm -hmm. finally get that kiss, mm -hmm. and then she kind of. Turns her back, gives him the. I don't know. Like I felt like she was kind of being slightly reserved there. I was happy she kind of yeah. called him into the bed. Like yeah. we all wanted that, obviously. But then after the kiss, I was like, and then seeing him kiss Allison later, I was like, what's going on? Are we like slowing I, things down? I think like, that, you know we wanted to draw it out, and I think it's also like you know if they were gonna kiss, kiss, then they probably would have sex, sex right and then it would be like we don't want to do that so you just bad. wanted something so, cute yeah we, it was like a cute thing and also it was it's also where your characters are at and everything's right. going to hell in a handbasket right. and it just mm -hmm. felt right it would feel weird that they were absolutely so i think you know she's not she's not an easy girl she's not just gonna <laughs> but, you know, as an actor, I thought it was an interesting choice. You Good. know, I think it could have been very cliche. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I thought I thought it was a very interesting mm -hmm. choice on Arden's part. And like, I well, director, right, Christian, oh, right. I'm sure <laughs> no, no, no. It was, I mean, it was the in the it was in the script that she they would they would spoon, mm -hmm. and that it would be sweet, and that it would be like that, and it just uh, yeah. So yeah. I think um, an Arden's great and. Uh, Tyler's obviously great, so it was, it yeah. was nice. Oh my god, that scene. Oh, I, I love that it was, scene. It I was had a so problem. Uh, you did. <laughs> no, you had a problem? No, I had a problem with, we were shooting in Scott's room this uh -huh. season, I'm like, <laughs> I had to shoot again in Scott's room. This, And I was like, we got to, because when you were on the set of his mm -hmm. room, we had all these like weird set dressing from like Atlanta when we were shooting there. So it was like <laughs> these weird toys and everything. And I'm like, He's like not a kid anymore. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I, I made them, and then Jeff agreed. I was like, we we got to update the room because the room. So mm-hmm. shooting on that bedspread drove me crazy because it was what like was the, the bedspread. It's just awful. It's like the bedspread of a. 12 year old boy <laughs> That's, I, was, I need to go back and yeah. walk at that and it was like it's, it's <laughs> not it's not to anybody's you know thing it's just ugly and I was like I'm choosing <laughs> shooting this lovely love scene on a brown like tartan bedspread it was just awful <laughs> and I saw I, I, this year I was like I'm not doing it we're getting him a proper bed and proper bed stands and... where is the satin sheets <laughs> well, uh, I'm just kidding yeah, I'm just kidding no you know what I think it was very appropriate the way they did it and, and like June was saying it wasn't cliche at all and it was refreshing mm-hmm. to see those choices yeah. made on screen really and you know it gives us a lot. It gives us, the audience, and Scott, a lot to look forward to. Cool. Good. <laughs> yes. As his relationship progresses, you know, our our we're kind of a part of it too. Yeah. So it's nice to see it slowly progress, unlike the real world today. And hopefully, yeah. that scene influences a lot of the teenagers and and adults who are watching the show. Totally. You have all the time in the world. You do. Yes. So slow it down. Appreciate each other. <laughs> um, so let's get talk about Peter a little bit. Mm-hmm. He doesn't uh, even need a new Gitsune spirit demon fly in him in yes. order to be bad. Yes. And we didn't know, I mean, I guess we still kind of don't know if he really knew that he was going to be able to help them. Right. Or if he thought that this might be a trick. I think that he really didn't know the outcome uh-huh. of what was going to happen. And if something horrible would have happened... He would have been like, well, I tried, <laughs> you know. Totally. So, There but- was actually a line in the show that got cut, not because he goes, we cut back to him and Melissa and, and uh, Deaton, and he, she goes, is it working? And he goes, I don't know, I've never done this before. Mm. But it felt, mm-hmm. it felt too comical in the point of crisis in the episode, you know, mm. just before Holland starts bleeding, her nose starts bleeding, so we cut it. Or right. Jeff cut it. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, definitely, I think from the fans, we we knew that yeah. too. I mean, yeah. we know not to trust him; that he manipulates everyone. Totally. And you know, and of course, when they take them back to that room and they're trapped, mm-hmm. that's when I immediately thought, "Peter, this is your mm-hmm. Paul." And mm-hmm. then you know, they get out of it, and um, Peter actually screams Lydia out yeah. of that trance. Mm-hmm. So he was actually helpful in yeah. the end. He came through, well, kept I, his I part of the deal. I think he has a real bond with Lydia. I was going and to that say there is mm-hmm. a sort of it may be, you know, he's completely manipulated her and she sort of manipulated him back in, in other ways. But he, uh, so I think he cares about her. He wouldn't admit it, but I think he does. No, I mm-hmm. completely agree. Mm-hmm. Um, I re- that was one of the, one of my favorite moments in the episode was mm-hmm. like that moment when he's holding her and mm-hmm. he's like genuinely really, mm-hmm. you know, worried about it because she's, and maybe it's the dad, the father instincts kind mm-hmm. of, now that he knows mm-hmm. that he's a dad. Oh, there you mm-hmm. go. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. I love that moment. Not to yeah. jump forward, but when she whispers in his ear, and yeah. Yeah. I was like, I think I'll do, I'll do it slow motion. I then, thought that choice was perfect. Oh, good. The good. way she whispers yeah. Malia's name, mm-hmm. that was the because any other way it would have came across, yeah. you know, corny or mm-hmm. wrong. Or well, I was just like, like, how am I going to make this interesting? And just so what we do is we film the shot in slow motion, mm-hmm. and then you play everything normal. And then just at that moment, I just have it just go slow when she whispers in his ear and, and you know, you see her eyelids flutter. You just, mm-hmm. the audience, it's sort of imperceptible, but it, but it, you, it gives it that sort of gravitas or something or, mm-hmm. or something otherworldly. No, I mean, that's how everything in this episode was. It's like, if it could have been made more interesting or filmed a more interesting way, like, you did it. So yes, I, I was, just, I was I just so into each scene, mm-hmm. you know? Cool. I, I have to take notes while I'm watching yeah. it, obviously. But I was, like, not mm-hmm. taking notes. I could not. I was just staring and being mesmerized by, Aww. like, the, the shots and the way the actors were, you know, speaking and carrying themselves mm-hmm. and being directed by you, of course. It was just gorgeous. Yeah. But, I took notes, but all I kept on saying was, Oh my god, so good. Oh my god, so amazing. Oh Dude, my that's god. Good note, I know, but like, <laughs> just that's, that's, that's I'm just what kidding. it was constantly thinking. Yeah. Let, let's see your note. Her notes are just like drawings like, of all the characters so with hearts. I was like, I, I can really show you guys. I'm not lying. <laughs> Do you guys feel like we can trust Peter just now? Text those to me. Yeah, yeah text, text those to us later. I was but like, so good. Oh my god. <laughs> can we trust Peter now? He did kind of keep his end of the deal. He helped Lydia. Um, can mm-hmm. we trust him? I, I <laughs> he mean, knows. What I, I mean, I feel like, you know, no, after now that he does. has a child, I think that yeah. will definitely change him. Um, but, yep. you know, he's changing slowly. We still don't know exactly what he wants. 
Um, I know he wants to know who his daughter is, but I feel like there's always another plan with Peter. So we'll see where he's going with that. Mm -hmm. Um, so we finally get to that ice bathroom. Lydia and Scott, they find Styles. Yep. And now is he playing a game of, was that chess or checkers with no, the Nogetsune? No, that's like, it's like, a, it's like an Asian version of chess. Go, it's called Go. Yeah. It's called Go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, because they were saying, you know, chess is his game, and mm -hmm. then, but I didn't recognize the pieces. So it's called Go. And, yeah. and so is it like chess in mm -hmm. a way? It is, it is, but it's far more complex, I think. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. and, it, and it can take, you know, weeks to play a game. Right. So what I happens think. is like you kind of like if you surround the other player's color with your color, you can change the middle. Like you can you kind of eat away their color and oh. put your color mm. there. Like that's you very take interesting. Up, you take up their space. And we I don't know if it's coming to play, but it comes into play in the show and okay. moves as sort of things mm -hmm. that our characters do and I don't know if it's happened, so I probably shouldn't say anything. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, well, finally, you know, Scott, we get that whole scene where Lydia is saying to, to Scott, you know, he is human, mm -hmm. but he's a member of the mm -hmm. pack that mm -hmm. Styles yeah. is, and he's always been. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've definitely felt that, but it was nice to finally hear it definitely. on screen. Yeah. And whenever Scott howls, it definitely brought Styles huh. out of that trance. He realizes what's happening, that he's been <laughs> playing this game with the Nugitsune, yep. and he yep. just throws all the pieces mm -hmm. off. Yeah. And, and just, that was an incredible shot. And, and besides that, they're on top of the Nemeton. Uh -huh. And we got that gorgeous shot of the Nebaton before it was, you know, cut down. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like last week. And we are just really looking forward to exactly how that tree was cut down. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and it's funny because we that. talked about doing a um, a prequel show with young Derek. Oh, um, that but it, would be so it good. Didn't, it didn't materialize, but I had a whole thing of like the, the show would actually open with the Nebaton being cut down and why and what. So that would be very cool. I yeah. mean, hey, you could always like put it as at the beginning of another season too, as sure. like a bonus totally. or Teen Wolf is coming, but here's just a mm -hmm. bonus mm -hmm. episode that's not part of the season. Yes. Or you could make it a movie because a movie. everyone would. I mean, oh, I think you guys would really be that's surprised a great idea. Mm -hmm. about about the turnout because everyone, like everyone, is a Teen Wolfie. They really are of all ages. It's and pretty I, amazing. It is. I think that it would be great. We, yeah. we'll definitely talk to Jeff. About that. Yes, like, yeah. Christian's idea was amazing. <laughs> Here's what we think. <laughs> if our opinions matter at all. Um, mm. So then we get that scene where we think Styles is awake and he's okay, and then he's standing off to the side. Uh, oh no! All the raps are coming yes. out of his oh. mouth. And then he gets up, and we think that he's okay because that he's been devoided, right. or the new Gitsune has come out of him. And then it comes up and I'm like, oh great, this is Reese. Reese is coming back. Yeah, we get to look at him again. I was like so excited. Uh, but no, um, we unwrap him and it is Styles. Yep. The real Styles. And the other one was the new Gitsune who captured Lydia and now took her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That was just, what was that scene like directing? Mm -hmm. Can you talk about it a little it bit? Because that was just incredible. It was really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was probably one of the hardest scenes in the show because A, it was at the end of the shoot. Mm -hmm. We had to do it in that living room, which is a fantastic set, but it's a living room. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, how interesting can you make the living room? And I'd been in, in, in the episode a lot. So um, I said, make it magic hour. So we changed the lighting so it was like red and orange. Mm. And then... Oh. Um, we have this sequence because you know we, we're because we're low budget. I, you know, I was like, we have to do this without visual effects. So, I came up with the idea that we would build a platform, and that we would have the actor, and and it was scary because we thought, well, do we do the platform against green screen, or do we do it in the room? And everybody was sort of like, it's not going to work if you do it in the room. And I was like, I think it'll work. Mm -hmm. Like, I it I think it will work because we we built this flat. Pl platform about I think three feet high uh, or two feet high I can't remember. three feet high and then the actor was underneath and then all the other actors are standing on the platform so that we can get that low angle mm -hmm. shot as mm -hmm. he comes out in the foreground and all the actors are standing and really they're like a foot from the ceiling because oh they're God. so much higher yeah but because of the angle the way we shot it it just looked like and we raised, we did little camera tricks, like or, or set tricks, where we raised all the paintings up 
Oh, wow. You know, and then there's a shot where Styles is against the window with the sofa, the Nagitsune Styles, avoid Styles, and we have the Nagitsune coming out, and you don't even realize that the window is actually way shorter than it should be because it just the way we shot it. So just it's it's pretty amazing what you can do. But so we had to shoot all of that mm -hmm. and then take the platform out and then shoot everything else mm -hmm. and the whole scene and everything and have him then out and we put you know so it was pretty hard and the producer came <laughs> And shut us down because we were going late, and so then I and then they let me start again the next day, and and I was like, why don't you let me just finish? <laughs> um, but uh, uh, it was it was fun, and it, you know, you, but you're dealing with how many actors were on set? Oh, it's like six, I mm -hmm. think, five or six. Wow. So there's that, and then you know, um, the, we have the actor who plays the Nagitsune, who's amazing. Mm -hmm. So he did all the movement oh, stuff. Oh yeah, who is that? Yeah, we were wondering. He's amazing. I'm not going to tell you, you because I'm trying to think if you've actually. Oh, okay. Actually, okay, so yes, it's it, something in the it, episode. It, it'll it'll come up. It'll come up. Oh no 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 wait no it is. He, wait, the person playing the Nagisa? No no no. He played um, he played uh, the guy in the um, uh, the the Icon House. He plays the doctor in the Icon House episode. Oh. The one who comes and um, uh, takes. Um, uh, the one who's the, the, the what's his character's name? God, I've completely forgotten because um, I didn't write that episode, so it's all about oh. No, it, the one who um, who's like the head doctor at the at the Icon House. Uh -huh. Yeah, and he's, yeah, I think I know who you're he's talking like, about. He's yeah, he's a fantastic actor. Wow. He's really great. Yeah, he does oh, such a great awesome. job. Yeah, and so in the, even in the movements and the and stuff, he's just like yeah, it's the way so, he carries himself. Well, he'd walk on set on that costume, and you'd be absolutely terrified because he just oh, he just bet. moves, and it's just very. Oh. He's a really, really that great. We wrote a new Gitsune dance. That's mm -hmm. what we were doing. So it's like, um, yeah, we got to show you we later. We can all on. do it. We need to have him on. Yeah. Okay. So you, like, oh, teach, you, us, I teach us how you to do it. You should bring him on. You have yeah. to. You should. But we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay, great. And he can show us his moves. Yes. Um, <laughs> so the last thing we got to talk about is Agent McCall sticking his neck out for mm -hmm. Selinsky and letting mm -hmm. us know that, you know, he didn't come to town to kind of kick him out. He was there to talk to Scott and he's mm -hmm. been, you know, pushing off the impeachment. And, you know, he definitely stuck his neck out for him this time. And, you know, they've become friends. So I think Selinsky's job is safe. But that whole scene where we were talking about for a moment earlier, yeah. Styles talking to Melissa as no Gitsune crying, she takes off his, you know, tape and he's like, Oh, you really you fell for that, mm. Melissa and then the whole like tears turn to like anger and rage and no Gitsune mm -hmm. uh, flawless mm -hmm. from Dylan and yeah. then also just what he was saying to her, the mm -hmm. manipulation and the mm -hmm. way he was mm -hmm. saying it and saying, you know, once Scott finds out he'll never forgive you. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, that sets up such a mystery for us mm -hmm. because we really don't know what happened mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. yeah. in their relationship. And you got to feel like it's supernatural. Being like a show on Teen Wolf, it's not going to be something like, oh, she cheated on me and that's mm -hmm. why. You, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like it's got to be something supernatural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of you, one of our viewers, Derek Sourwolf, commented on YouTube. At, oh, good. What did really, he say? Really curious about what Melissa's secret is. Mm -hmm. She's just wondering. Oh, and did you have like a couple other comments from the fans? Yes, definitely. And um, well, Nick made millions. Great name. <laughs> asked Share, if, Nick. Share. <laughs> yes. <asked laughs> if anyone noticed that Isaac was not on the chessboard, and his Ooh. and his chess piece was tossed aside, and mm -hmm. so they think that Isaac is going to die. Right. Oh. He's then an the expendable pawn. Mm -hmm. He's first to call it. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. not, I, really I think we so. saw that last week, <laughs> and uh, the pawn, the pawns in the game of chess are yes. expendable. You can lose them, mm -hmm. and they're often sacrificed. Right. And that would make sense if he dies this season because he's in the opening credits, and Jeff said that someone from the opening credits was going to uh, die. I'm not getting involved. <laughs> and also, <laughs> in we have such amazing, amazing viewers and followers. Um, somebody on Twitter also forwarded like an article about two new lacrosse players who are joining. Ooh. Yes. Do Next they look like Reese? Is it, is it the twins? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> one of the one of the actors was in Ender's Game. I, oh, I don't know. I his. like that movie. And really um, the other one, I, it escapes me. Do you know who tweeted it out? 
Okay, I will. I will come back. To okay, this and we'll now. we'll give you a shout out later, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so we oh, just Valentine Thomas Art. Oh, yeah. well, he's one of our favorite fans. Yeah. So Aww. thank you so much, Valentine. Um, we just want to ask you a couple questions before we roll <laughs> sure. out. Um, you know, you've worked on so many great shows, Lost, mm-hmm. Six Feet Under, and now Teen Wolf. What's like so, the most valuable thing you've learned? You know, with all your writing and directing now on Teen Wolf, with, either from the set or just directing. I know you said Russell's been a huge mentor and Jeff and um, writing. I think the major thing. I don't know if I said this before, but it's like just not to be an asshole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of people who work in this business, unfortunately, who get given power, and they. And I think you know we. Will, uh, I also just have to remember is that. You know, when you're under tremendous stress and you're tired and you don't have patience, you do become an asshole. But you have to remember that all these people are working, you know, being on a set. Can I say that word as well? Can I yeah. Say? <laughs> That's it, like when you're working on iTunes, a iTunes, YouTube. Okay, okay. Yeah. So when you're working on a, uh, on a set and you have all these people doing all this work for you and standing in the cold and the rain mm-hmm. and they're all bringing their best things, you know, obviously there are going to be mistakes, but there are some people who just will then just, you know, completely eviscerate that, you know, like that person for making a mistake or just not being able to deliver what you need right at that minute. Mm-hmm. And it's you, you do sometimes have to stop yourself from reacting. You just have to be, okay, this should be fun. These people are doing the best they can. It's not mm-hmm. the end of the world and we'll fix it and we'll do it some other way or something. Mm-hmm. So I think that's probably the number one lesson. And I think that's definitely, I got that from my parents and stuff. But um, I think that that's it. And then also sort of to believe in your vision and just be strong with it. Yeah, Not I mean, you had your that film that was nominated for yeah. an Oscar. And then, you know, now 20 years later, mm-hmm. you're getting paid to, mm-hmm. to be in a director. What yeah. can you say to the people at home, you know, who, you know, they're still chasing that dream mm-hmm. and, and maybe they don't feel like it's possible? I, you know, I, I was hearing somebody talk about stuff and I, I think they were saying that, you know, when you're starting out, you your art... You, your art, I think it was Ira Glass. I'm trying to think this. Uh, your art is sort of nascent and it's sort of immature and it's, 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 your writing may be sort of, you know, rudimentary or something. But, it, it, and you may have good taste about what, what would make a good writing sample or what would make a good story, but you, because you can appreciate what's good, but you, you then mm. give up because you, look at your own work and you think oh god that's it. that's not really delivering what I want it to be but the only way you'll ever get it to be what you want it to be is by practice and yes. doing it and doing it and doing it mm-hmm. and that goes for acting yes. you know there's so many actors unfortunately in this town who just come here and think that they're going to be actors because they look good mm-hmm. and, I, and I, I so often meet young actors who are like oh I want to be on the show and I'm like are you in acting class and they're like no and I'm like well then you're not an actor yeah, you know, right. are you, you know, are you going to the theater and studying actors? Are you watching every film and studying performances? Or the same with writing, you know. And so it's like, are you writing? You know, people are like, oh, I want, I've got this story that I want to <laughs> tell. It's great. You should hear it. It's great. I'm like, well, then write it. You know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I am sounding sort of harsh, but it's like people it's people chase celebrity before they 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 actually. Um, build their own talent Mm -hmm, and some people do have like dylan he has you know he just has a natural talent and he's but he works bloody hard and he works bloody hard to deliver that talent in a in a consistent package because talent may be one thing but you can't consistently rely on it unless you have the tricks of the trade to Mm -hmm. be able you know i i it boggles my mind because i've acted before and i know how hard it is and how you know I don't think I was a particularly good actor oh you were the principal in Teen Wolf right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were amazing (laughs) apparently apparently the principal is going to be recon well, I'm what? sorry. I'm very I, upset. I disagree with that. I, I think, I think we should. We need to start a petition, Twitter, whatever you can yes. do. That. <laughs> okay, Christian first we need to get you a yeah. Twitter. Yeah. I, well, yes. I was like, Jeff, at least give me a real scene. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, those would be my 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 lessons of the trade uh, at the moment, I guess. You know, and also just believe in your vision and just keep doing it. Mm-hmm. You know, and be mm-hmm. strong with it, but don't be. 
I, I mean, I th the, the, the medium that we work in is very collaborative. So you have to be, you have to listen to everybody and collaborate with people, Definitely. Mm -hmm. but have a singular vision. But some other people may have, you know, a suggestion that makes your vision better. So you have mm -hmm. to do that Absolutely. too. Absolutely. So. Well, I think that's great advice to wrap up on. Oh, wow. I, I know you don't have a Twitter, but where can the fans follow you or, or figure out what you're oh, doing? Do you have a know. website? I don't have anything. You it's don't too have crazy. anything. Well, tweet us and we'll forward it. Yeah, okay. we All will right. forward right. your messages. Is that it? Is that it, the show? That's the that show. Was quick. I know. Wow. I wish it was fun. longer. Wow. June, where can we find you on Twitter? Oh, you can find me on Miss June, Miss underscore June Lee and Instagram also without the underscore. <laughs> you can follow me at Cinematic Escape on Twitter. You can Google my blog, Cinematic Escape. And this is the song yes. when Kira and Scott were kissing. So yes. What sweet. a great song to go out on. We'll tweet it at you guys later. Christian, thank you so much. It's Not, always a pleasure having yes. you in studio. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. So All much. right, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs> All right. Bye. By executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Views expressed herein are those of the hosts only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.